Let's take a look at the same worksheet, uh, but this time thinking more about double reflections over lines that intersect instead of those that are parallel. So we learned that the double reflection over parallel lines moves things in this beautiful translation type of a relationship. Here we're going to find that the intersection of the two lines will definitely change the resultant transformation. So again, the location of the triangle or the point does not matter as to which direction it goes. The direction is determined by the order of things here. First, this says reflect over M. So I'm going to do my best here to reflect this. We're going to kind of rough it in a little bit. You'll be able to see my work here. I'm using the concept of the parallel uh, motion here, the perpendicular to this line here, and then we reflect it into position. That would be the first reflection here over M, giving us A prime, B prime, C prime. We'll now reflect that one more time, doing my best here. There's A double prime. Let's see, there would be C double prime. And somewhere out here will be B double prime. Something like this. Now again, I'm just kind of roughing this in for sake of time and working on a board. Let's take a look at the original though, and then its image, its double image, I guess. Uh, the first one reflected it, reversed the orientation, it reflected it again, reversed the orientation back. So first of all, we know that the orientation is the same. So this has to be either a translation or a rotation. Now it's not a translation because you'll notice everybody is not moving in the same parallel direction. So that's out. So what do we have? We have a rotation. This, you can kind of see it has been moved onto its back as it got rotated through there. So a double reflection is a rotation about uh, about that point of intersection. So whatever that point is, that's the center of rotation. And we know it has to be a rotation because the orientation is the same, but points travel different distances. That's why we talked about all those properties earlier. Now the second thing is, is how big is the rotation? Well, do you remember with the translation, there was a nice relationship there? There's a nice one here too. Take a look. This angle here, it got reflected. So that angle happened here to here. The angle from that point to the next one got reflected as well. See how it got used twice. So here is the angle between the two lines, an X and a dot but the total rotation was two X's and two dots. So the total rotation is exactly double the angle of intersection. The rotation value will always be double the angle of intersection between the two lines. So whatever it is, uh, it will be double. So if this angle in here was 40, the rotation would be 80 and so on. Now here's the trick though. Positive, negative, how do I know which way to go? Because in theory, you could reflect this over M first. Um, and M being uh, over, sorry, over M first and then N and go a different direction potentially around the shape. In theory, there are actually two ways to do a reflection M and N. One will give you a positive answer and one would give you a negative answer. So how do you know which one? 
The general convention is to go through the acute angle uh, when reflecting, not the, the obtuse uh, angle. But they're not right or wrong, it's just a convention. So again, typically, and the other thing I guess I would say to you is they will often label the angle and you'll know which angle to be going through. Let me show you what I mean. So the idea is that if two lines were to intersect, and let's say this is 24 degrees, and I have, uh, let's just do a single point this time, A here. Now, it, let's do something weird. Let's reflect over N first, and then M second. Now, you might say, okay, well, uh, how does this work uh, in terms of the order and things like that? Well, first of all, the fact that you're reflecting over M and N means that they intersect at 24. So the total rotation value will be 48. Will it be positive? Will it be negative? Let's find out. If we reflect over N first and then over M second, that heads in a clockwise direction, and so our answer is a negative 48. Now, there is a positive way to get there, but again, would be going the other way around in terms of the double reflection. Generally, we reflect through the acute angle or the labeled angle, but again, there will always be two possible answers provided there. Um, so, what would happen if this order was different? What happens if we reflect over M first and then reflect over N? Well, that would mean we, we reflect over the M and we head in the direction of the N, first, second. This is a counterclockwise direction, and so we get a positive rotation of 48 degrees. Always double the intersection would be the total. The rotation center would be found here at the intersection, and it begins, and the orientation maintains itself, so we're looking at a rotation. Very tricky because rotations have two directions you can go, but the general convention is that you reflect through the acute angle, or probably the labeled angle is the one you'd work through, and, again, there's not a wrong answer to it. You could either get the positive direction or the negative direction as an answer there. Make sure you just see the order that they come in and follow that order, M to N, and our rotation in this case is counterclockwise, so it would be a positive 48 degrees. We'll look at a couple under the Elmo. All right, let's take a look at uh, a double reflection over intersecting lines. The lines that we're going to reflect over are the common ones that happen, uh, the x-axis and the y-axis, and they are 90 degrees to each other. So remember, when two lines intersect uh, at, a, at 90 degrees, the double reflection will double 90, giving us a ro rotation of 180 degrees. Let's just see if that actually is true when we do the work. So. Let's reflect over the x-axis first. So I'm going to just quickly plot these in. And then we're going to reflect over the y-axis second. So seven. Here, and I'm just moving quickly here, but you can see these reflections. Here's the result. And in theory, this is a 90 degree intersection. And so double reflecting over 90 degrees should be a final rotation of 180. Let's take a look to see if that's what happened. So a rotation of positive 90 is here. A rotation of positive 180 would land it here. So it's exactly what we would expect it to be. Let's take a look where the lines are not the x and y axis. Here we're going to go over the x axis and then the y. So here's how, or sorry, then the y equals x line. Now, here helps us to understand some of the complexity. 
there are two angles that are the intersection of x, the x-axis and the y equals x line. There's the 45 degree angle and the 135 degree angle. Generally, we go over the acute angle. It is not a for sure, but the general convention is usually we go over the acute angle or the, at least the marked angle. So I'm going to do that. This says reflect over the x-axis. That's this axis. And then this y equals x line. So this is a direction that I'm going to go. It, here's the angle of 45. So double 45 is 90. This is going in a clown or clockwise manner. So this is going to be a rotation about the origin 90 degrees. That will be the result of this relationship. Now I could do this. Let me just do this one quickly to give you a, a situation and see if that actually is what happens. Um, let's see, 5 and 2, 2 and 5. I'm using my rules here, 7 and 1, 1 and 7. Uh, 7 and 4, 4 and 7. See how quick it is when you know the coordinate rules? That I, what I was using there are the coordinate rules for reflecting over the y equals x line. It's just as simple to switch x and y. Let's do a quick test to see if this is truly a rotation of 90 degrees. In theory, uh, because we double reflected over 45 degrees, we should get a total rotation of 90. Bam, there it is, looking good. Let's do a couple quick problems just to show you how all these can be solved and applied. Here we go. I'm reflecting over M first, here it is, and then N second. Do you see how I know what direction it's going through that acute angle? That is in a negative direction. So this actually would be a rotation of negative 76 degrees. Now yes, there is an angle here and you could have gone the other way and got a positive angle. It would be basically this number plus uh, 360. It would be the other direction. But generally again, the acute angle is what we use. Here I'm going to go over N first and then M. The location of the shape makes no difference. N first, then M. So I'm going positive. And so this is going to be a rotation about O, if we call this O or this O. Um, uh, let's see, 142 degrees, positive direction. So let's see what it says here. What would be the resultant angle value if I went over M first and then M? That's a negative direction. That would be negative 42. Here, if I go over N first, then M, I'm going in a positive direction. That would be 126. And then finally, if I go over N and then M, I'm going in a positive direction, 162. So there's how we work with double reflections over intersecting lines. Keep track of the angle that's provided. Uh, there is often more than one answer, but generally we use the acute angle or the labeled angle to help us determine the angle size.